with another tablet tip. And today we're going to be talking about turning back time with the history brush. You know you can undo something if you've laid down a brush stroke, for example, and you don't like it. You can use a keyboard shortcut and step backwards through your history states. But what I want to talk about is how to selectively step backwards using the history brush. It's a fairly fundamental tool, but it's oftentimes overlooked. And I'm going to give you a couple of ideas as to how you can employ the history brush in your workflow. So let's take a look. When it comes to Photoshop, when you think about turning back time, it might conjure the idea of restoring old photos. Well, I'm sorry that's not the topic of today's discussion. Rather, what I'm going to do is talk about how you can turn back time with the history brush. And to contrast that statement, I'm going to also talk about undo, step backwards, and the fade command as ways in which you can step back through your history states. So what I'm going to do to start off is to open up the history panel. The history panel is where you can find a series of steps or processes or functions or effects that you've applied to an image. For example, if I were to take my paintbrush and draw a stroke of color across this image, you can see in the history panel this brush tool listed here. I can undo that by hitting Command or Control Z. You can see that that disappears. Now if I were to lay down a series of brush strokes, you can see that with each stroke of my pen to the tablet, another step is being applied to my history. If I want to undo each one of these individual brush strokes, I can hit Command Option Z or Control Alt Z to step back again through those history states. Now you'll notice that those individual history states are grayed out. That's because I've undid them. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and apply an adjustment to this image. I'm going to hit Command or Control L to bring up the Levels dialog box and I'm going to drag this slider here to the right and I'm going to then make the image kind of dark. Now let's say I didn't really like the 100% effect that I applied here. I can use the fade command to dial this back. That's command or control shift F to dial this opacity back based on a percentage. So for example, if I drag this down to say 34% or so, you can see that I'm dialing back the effect of that particular image. And I'll go ahead and click OK. But you can see that, well, they're simply one-sided. You can step backwards one step, you can step backwards multiple steps through your history states, and you can fade, based on a percentage, the last step that you applied. But I want to show you my favorite way, and that is to selectively paint with the history brush. So to show you that, I'm going to tab over here to this other open image. Now in this case, let's go ahead and close the history panel up here. I've got this great image of an old Ford truck in front of this old barn, and well, I like the exposure in some areas, but I'd like to lighten it up in others. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go under Image. I'm going to come down here to Adjustments and go to Brightness and Contrast. I'm going to drag the Brightness slider up considerably, say about 100 or so, and I'll go ahead and click OK. Now I like the way the truck looks, but the sky is becoming a little bit over uh, overexposed. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to hit Y on the keyboard. That's the keyboard shortcut for the history brush. I'm going to make sure that my mode here is set to normal. And I'm going to press this button right up here. This is what I like to call my pressure control icon up on the options bar. And if I hover my cursor over this long enough, you'll see that it says always use pressure for opacity. That means that I can adjust the opacity of my brush based on how hard I physically press my pen to the tablet. Now, I happen to have a soft round brush right now, so what that means is I've got a nice feathered edge. With the history brush selected, I'm going to get a very large brush here, and I'm just going to barely touch my pen to the tablet up here at the top, and then I'm gradually going to press a little bit harder a couple of times up here, and I'll kind of create a little bit of a vignette. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm bringing back the original image, and there we go. That looks pretty good there. Let me zoom out so we can kind of see this here with a little frame around it. I'm going to go up under File, drop down to Revert, and take a look at the before version of this image. There's my before. I'm going to hit Command or Control Z, again, to step backwards one step, or undo, and we'll take a look at the after. So again, before and after. Using the history brush, I was able to selectively paint back to the original or opening state. Really nice down and dirty way to retract or go back to a previous version of the image. Let's take a look at another example. In this case, what I want to do is I want to apply a filter to this image to kind of give it a little bit of a stylized look. Now, once the filter applies, what I'm going to do is, in the similar process that I used in the previous example, I'm going to paint back to the history state that has the original. 
So I'm going to open up my history panel once more to show you what's going on here. You can see that the open state was the first thing that we did to the image. Obviously, we opened it up. Then we applied the filter. In this case, it was Color Effects Pro 4. And I'll go ahead and minimize this. Now, I've got a fairly large brush here. Let's get a slightly smaller brush using my bracket keys. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint in some of these different areas of the image to combine this kind of stylized sort of black and white muted color version with the original color just like that. And I'm going to paint a little bit right here through the center. I'm going to bring back some of the color in the leaves there. And I'm just making these short wispy strokes using my history brush. Again, I'm adjusting the opacity of the effect or of the brush itself based on how hard I physically press my pen to the tablet. Now, I like that kind of sort of muted kind of storybook looking version of this image. Again, if I go back to the history panel, you can see all these different states of the history are visible. Now, keep in mind that what happens here is that the history panel keeps 20 steps by default in Photoshop. That is 20 steps or brush strokes or effects in a rolling list uh, within the history panel. If I were to go back to any one of these individual states, you can see how I've stepped backwards through my history manually. Well, this is the same type of a concept if I were to uh, step backwards using the keyboard shortcut. Command or Control, Option or Alt, Z, you can see again manually it steps back through those individual history states. So again, this is a nice way of stepping back through history once you've gone ahead and painted with the history brush. All right, let's take a look at one more example here. This is a really unique way of using the history brush. One of the things that you can do here is you can use the history brush to paint with various blend modes. And that's what I want to do. I'm going to select that history brush and I'm going to come up here under the blend modes on my options bar and I'm going to change the mode from normal to screen. Screen is a popular way of lightening up an image. And what I want to do here is I want to add a little bit more sunlight or maybe a little bit more shine on this young lady's hair. So again, I'll point out that on the options bar, I still have that pressure control icon turned on and I'm adjusting the effect uh, of this brush based on how hard I press my pen to the tablet. And uh, I should say I'm adjusting the opacity. Let's go ahead and add some highlights there. And I'm going to change that blend mode from uh, screen down here to multiply. I should say up here to multiply. Let's add a little bit more contrast here. And by the way, what I'm doing is I'm basically uh, accentuating the highlights and shadows that exist within the image already. There we go. That looks pretty good. And uh, let's make one more adjustment here. I'm going to come down here to soft light. And I'm going to zoom in on this young lady's teeth. And I'm going to press uh, my pen very lightly on her teeth there. And a little bit on the eyes. There we go. And we'll go ahead and zoom back out. Now, if I were to go under File, down here to Revert, we're going to take a look at the before or the original images, uh, image as we opened it. There's our before. I'm going to hit Command or Control Z again. Stepping through our history there, you can see where it says Revert. I'm going to hit Command or Control Z to go back to the uh, original and the after. Again, before, after. So we've added a nice little, a nice little highlights to the hair here using the history brush by changing the blend modes up on the option bar. A really unique way of using the history brush. So there you go. I hope you have a better appreciation now for what the history brush can do for you and your workflow. It's a great alternative to the undo command or step backwards or even the fade slider. Go ahead and give it a try on your next project. We'll see you for another tablet tip.